All right, guys, Federal Reserve had an absolutely momentous decision to make yesterday about whether or not to raise rates and by how much. This, of course, comes on the heels of the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank and really industry-wide bank bailout that occurred. So on the one hand, you know, you had this series of uh, bank failures and market fallout because, in part, because of the actions that the Federal Reserve had been taking in hiking interest rates. You also, in the response to that situation, had the Fed basically going in the polar opposite direction of hiking rates in order to save, you know, wealthy depositors. They're like, okay, well, we gotta, we gotta actually ease money to make sure these people are okay. So there was a big question mark about what the Fed would do. And they made their decision yesterday. Let's put this up on the screen. They decided to continue hiking interest rates, um, but rather than going for, you know, half point or more like they have in recent times, go ahead and put this tear sheet up on the screen, CNBC. They decided to hike rates by a quarter percentage point. Um, and there was a shift in language. You know, people read into everything that Jerome Powell says very, very closely. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. But there was a change in language, too, about how far they're going to go in terms of hiking rates. And they indicated that increases are coming to an end. So that is what we found out yesterday. I mean, I'll just say it. I think it's a mistake. I think given the fact that, number one, you know you had this banking issue. Number two, you went out of your way to you know ease monetary conditions when it came to these specific depositors and these specific group of banks. But you're continuing on the other side to hike rates, which would could cause more fallout, not only for banks, but for ordinary people as well, at a time when what you've been doing hasn't really worked all that way to curb inflation, I think it would have made a lot of sense to say, you know what, we're going to wait and see what happens and what conditions ultimately settle in. Well, I I think, it, I also agree with you that it was a mistake, but more so, I think that it shows how ideological uh, things are. Over Absolutely. And that, I Absolutely. think, is actually the greatest danger where, look, this is almost like, discount volkerism. They're like, no matter how much we have to do, we will raise, raise, raise until we see that unemployment rate go down and- we, Go up. Or, sorry, go up. Yeah. And as long as that is the sole metric, like, oh, bank collapses, okay. Uh, you know, sheer chaos in mortgage markets and home prices and all that, okay. Uh, making it unable for businesses to borrow or for people to obtain credit, not even cheap, but like at a normal rate at like something that would be considered fair market value and the ability to expand your capital. It's just, they are making sure that the damage that they're willing to wreak is just one of those where ideologically, until they see that rate go up, they are just not going to hit pause on the brakes. Yeah. I think it's a huge mistake. Yeah. No, I mean, they have this like tough guy mentality of like, we got to show them that we're going to stick to our guns and we're going to keep going even though things are already breaking. Um, so there's another piece here just to highlight this, uh, what they call a quandary. Put this next piece up on the screen. Um, this was before the uh, Fed announced their decision, but it highlights the, the conundrum that they were facing. They say banks are running scared. Is the Federal Reserve about to make things worse? Uh, the quandary, they say, highlights the multiple and conflicting issues facing the Fed with key sectors of the economy growing strong. Inflation still more than double the Fed's target rate of 2%. Central bank is keenly aware that any sign it is relenting in the battle against inflation could give rise to another wave of price increases. At the same time, lifting the federal funds rate could now mag magnify other lenders, the same kind of problems that led panic depositors to yank their money out of Silicon Valley banks. So that was the basic decision. Again, I think it was a mistake. And just to reiterate what we've talked about here a lot, because I think it's a really key point, uh, wage inflation, which is Basically, the only thing that the Fed can really deal with here is a minuscule part of what overall infl what has contributed to overall inflation. Uh, a large percentage has been corporate uh, price gouging, and another large percentage has been continued supply chain issues, none of which the Fed has any control over whatsoever. So as they continue this like death march of interest rate hikes, you know, consequences be damned. Just keep in mind that the tool that they're using here is actually very poorly suited 
to deal with the real problem that does, of course, have huge negative impacts on every working person in the entire country. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the the big takeaway is that, look, we just have a far less control than I think any of us would want on how any of this is actually run and on the major impact it can have on our lives. Housing is the one that, you know, you just can't underestimate yeah. in terms of how big of a deal it is. And I see it everywhere in terms of, you know, houses with 30, 40 days of signs up there. And I guess I think that's fine, but it's not like the price has dropped to make it that's, affordable either. That's that's the and thing. with the mortgage rates, you know, six, seven percent, like good luck, you know, to a lot of people who are out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is some movement on the legislative front that we wanted to bring you, which is kind of encouraging. Uh, put this up on the screen. It's a bipartisan bill between two very unlikely bedfellows here, uh, U.S. Senator Rick Scott who is a real fiscal hawk, and uh, Democrat, of course, Elizabeth Warren. They have unveiled a bipartisan Fed oversight bill. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I genuinely don't know how impactful this would actually be if it was passed. But the fact that you have the two sides at least finding some common ground and trying to work together, I take as a good sign. And potentially this would have it. I'm not saying it wouldn't. I'm just saying I don't know. So the details here are that uh, the legislation would establish a presidentially appointed Senate confirmed inspector general at the Fed, like every other major government agency that's according to a joint release with Scott and with Warren. Warren said this month's banking upheavals have underscored the urgent need for a truly independent inspector general to hold Fed officials accountable accountable for any lapses or wrongdoing. Now, this comes as there are a million questions about how the Fed was so asleep at the switch that they let this all unfold at Silicon Valley Bank, where, by the way, the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank was sitting on the San Francisco Fed board, which is not a great look in terms of the optics of this situation. But uh, there's reporting now that the Fed knew there were problems with SVB mm -hmm. and that they had huge interest rate exposure. Actually, for years, they've been warning about this, but they didn't, they would just like send in a notice but they didn't actually do anything until this was a total crisis that required what is effectively a revolutionary remake of the banking system that even they are still trying to figure out what exactly it means. So we'll get to that in a moment. So the idea here is let's bring in an independent inspector general who can watch over what the Fed is doing here so that we can hope to have more teeth in terms of our regulatory bodies if we face a similar situation in the future. Yeah, I think, uh, look, with this, uh, with the actual legislation, as you said, in terms of an inspector general and all that, still, though, the checks that actual Congress would ever be able to exert on an independent Fed and make it more democratic, it just doesn't really exist, given the fact that you renominate mm -hmm. them on a very limited basis, like for 10-year terms, then even the way that the entire Federal Reserve governors are, are run from the system itself. It's designed basically to not have any democratic input. So there's not a lot you can do. You know, I'm not saying it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's it's only like an inch in the right direction. I yeah, guess it we'll leave this discussion for yeah. another day. But I do want to throw out there, we take as this bedrock assumption that the Fed has to be totally independent of politics. Mm -hmm. And that is not been the case throughout all of history. Yes. And there's a real debate to be had there. So we'll save that one for another day. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.